This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From custom domains to beautiful websites using their easily customizable templates that you can have up and running in minutes, e-commerce, email and email marketing, SEO, analytics, and scheduling, Squarespace does it all and has done it for us for the last six years. If you are a small to mid-sized business in any industry, Squarespace is the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash you for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code Hugh at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. My flirtation with the Leica M is over. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and I'll just cut to the chase. Leica's $9,000 60 megapixel backslide illuminated sensor and Maestro 3 processor equipped M11 does not address the full punch list some of us may have, like weather sealing, IBIS, and integrated EVF, compatibility with ProPhoto Flash, whatever. But I don't care. I haven't fully wrung it out either, choosing to take the very limited time I had with one to shoot it out in the real world and then print images from it rather than lab test it to find the limits of its dynamic range, high ISO performance, rolling shutter performance, new battery life, yada yada. Don't care about that either. Not that these are unimportant or that I won't get to them. They are important and I will. Ditto the performance of the new $660 VisaFlex. But I don't care about any of this right now because, well, the very bottom line is that after watching and waiting the better part of a decade to replace the M8 I sold back in 2012 and coming very close to pulling the trigger twice, first with an M10D and then an M10R as a companion to my SL2. No, my SL2 is not going anywhere. I already know what I need to know, which is why I've already ordered an M11. First, why the M11? Why an M at all? I could say a modern digital M is the back to the future culmination of my own personal photographic journey beginning in childhood. If you want to know a bit about that story, check out our short entitled We Knew Hilda. I'll put a link to it in the show notes below. I could also say that a Leica M for me is a photographic companion, a vessel of human history, the lens, if you will, no pun intended, although recognized, through which I experience history, a talisman, in fact, whispering softly to me every time I bring it up to my eye to do better, make your work count. If you want to know a little bit more about that perspective, check out our short Chasing Eisenstadt link down in the show notes as well. Or, since I already own and love my Leica SL2, I could, finally, say that an M is for those times when I don't want to shoot with the SL2, when I want to slow down, when I want to be a different kind of deliberate, when I want to call it spare shooting experience, minimalist, nothing but the essentials, both in terms of what I have to carry and how I interact with my environment in the moment I choose to capture the image. Want to know more about that? Check out our video, Leica M10R versus SL2, A Tale of Two Cameras. Link to that one down in our show notes as well. The thing is, all of these are true. All are the answers to the question, why an M? For me. Then again, none of these answers are likely to be your answers.
Hold that thought. Why the M11 in particular? A, because in my case, I've been shooting with M's for years, love doing so, have taken some of my favorite photographs of all time with them, gotten along just fine without IBIS, weather sealing, dioptric adjustment, and whatever else the M11 doesn't have either. Most of the time, anyway. But now the M11 offers a number of the things on my personal punch list that do indeed put it over the top. Most importantly, one, the M11 has significantly more resolution than any M before it. This matters because Claudia and I have adopted the philosophy that we'd rather use more pixels than glass for reach, and our prints keep getting bigger and bigger, currently 55 inches on the long side of the biggest among them. Using the 40 megapixels of the M10R and M10 monochrome convinced me of the value of a high-resolution M. That resolution gave a new lease on life to my 50 Summicron and 90 Elmerit, but a 50% gain over that is a meaningful advance bordering on the titillating. Although, yeah, that much resolution might end up costing me for new glass because I may well find the limits of my current M lenses there. Hold that thought for another video. Two. The M11 offers significantly more battery life, 64%, and more efficient electronics. This matters because if you're going to use the rear screen or the optional tiltable EVF, which I often do, and if you know anything about the last generation batteries and electronics of the N10 series, you know they'd suck down batteries like Pez. Less futzing is always a good thing. Three. The M11 now offers the ability to change ISO manually, which is how Claudia and I both roll much faster than futzing with the dedicated ISO dial on the left side of the camera. I assigned ISO to the now customizable, multiple function assignable rear scroll wheel. A simple press, and then you can scroll through the ISO settings, perfect for the ever-changing relationships between light and shadow on the streets of New York. And four. With the arrival of the M11, we're getting a new optional tiltable 3.7 million dot OLED EVF. This matters for those times when you need a field of view the optical finder cannot provide, precision focus, depth of field preview, and or exposure preview, although the jury is still out on the EVF itself as Leica didn't have one for me to play with. And even if it is awesome, I'm not sure if the change in design vocabulary from all the VisoFlexes before it is not a bridge too far. B. Then there are the new nice-to-haves, like multi-field metering, because if you're not going to use the rear screen or the EVF to set exposure by eye, and are not particularly interested in being removed from the moment by having to take the time to figure out where in the frame you need to point the camera for good 18% gray area, and then calculate how to deviate from that reading to appropriately weight the highlights or shadows that are of interest to you, you'll want the meter to be smarter about reading the scene than on previous M's electronic shutter up to one sixteen thousandth of a second so that if I so choose, I can shoot a Sumacron, Sumalux, or even a Noctilux wide open in broad daylight without having to futz with a screw-on neutral density filter. 64 gigabytes of permanent internal storage for those times when you run out of card space or forget to put a card in altogether and don't have a spare. Don't laugh. This happened the day Claudia and I got married, so we were incredibly lucky to have our Leica TL2 because it has internal memory too. Leica says the M11 also offers the highest dynamic range of any M ever. Progressively better high ISO performance as one switches from 60 megapixel DNGs to 36 megapixel DNGs and finally down to 18 megapixel DNGs, exceeding all but the monochromes, or maybe it does, to be confirmed. There's a single weather-sealed USB-C port for charging and data transfer. This matters because it means two less things to carry, a battery charger and an SD card reader, though it also means that you can plug it into a power pack in your pocket, not just useful when you need more juice, but when you need more juice in the cold. If you buy it in the black, it's also 20% lighter because then the top plate is aluminum. I have to say, the weight difference was palpable. There's a second function button on the top plate about where the one on the M10D was located. Something called live view stabilization, which is not IBIS, not lens stabilization, but instead the promise of a less smeary viewing experience when looking at the rear panel during live view, which would be especially useful when punching in for critical focus. A good thing, but for now another TBD, although candidly I didn't notice a difference. Maybe I would have if I'd had an M10 alongside for comparison.
with the arrival of the M11, we also have a much faster, cleaner implementation of Leica Photos with geotagging promised for later in 2022. Although this, like the new VisaFlex, ought to be backward compatible with the M10 series. I've been exploring it in beta and it is indeed much faster, but for the moment, I could care less. Which is a nice segue, actually, into the last of the reasons for why the M11 in particular now. And that is C, what the pandemic has reinforced for me, that life really is short. That life really does not offer guarantees. That you have to grab life by the throat, by the shoulders, by the because in the end, if you didn't realize until then, you will suddenly recognize that it was never about the cameras, the gear, not really. It was about you, how you chose to live, how you chose to see, with whom you chose to spend your time, and at a much more mundane level, how you chose to live up to your potential or with what you chose to imbue your equipment. Okay, that got a little heavy, but it does put a number of other things about the M11 into perspective. Nits, really, mostly revolving around more consistent design vocabulary and greater cross-camera compatibility. As in, one, the new battery is not the same as the one in the SL2 or Q2, so it cannot be used interchangeably with either. Two, the integrated battery cover bottom plate door for it abandons the M's design vocabulary completely, forsaking what could have been a lovely parallel radius to mirror the classic design cue of a 35mm film canister for an anodyne rectangle. Three, the rear buttons, while having the same functions as the earlier M10 series, along with the SL2 and Q2, are now slightly smaller, sit within a square collar, I'd call it, making it marginally harder to operate, especially with gloves, use a smaller, less legible font size, and are not quite as elegant in their haptic feedback as the others. Four, as I mentioned earlier, the new VisaFlex, which I have not seen in the metal, also abandons the design vocabulary of circles and curvature more generally for what may still turn out to work quite well, but may turn out to be quite brutish looking. Maybe not. I hope not. Five, the location of the tripod socket means battery and SD card cannot be removed without decoupling from tripod and or QR plate. Six, especially given the effort to create a new EVF, I believe it was a real missed opportunity not to bring back the vestigial advance lever as the perfect thumb rest for the 11, leaving the hot shoe open for the EVF. Seven, like most first models of each recent generation of digital M's, there is no top plate engraving, which makes me just a little sad, but boo-hoo, so what? Who else is it for? And finally, now let's get into it. What does this mean for you? Let's agree that an M11 is not a need to have kind of purchase. It is first and foremost for people who want it. People who want above all else, the maximum resolution M. People who either crop the crap out of an image or who print, I believe the technical term is Mongo, while capturing the image with a somewhat pocketable camera. And, of course, want an M, because otherwise, in comparison to the M10R or M10 Monochrome, the most obvious and immediate alternatives in the current Leica lineup, pretty much every other difference between the 40 megapixel M10s and 60 megapixel M11 is a matter of negotiation. As an alternative to the bigger battery and more efficient circuitry of the M11, you could buy a second or third battery for any M10. As alternatives to the USB-C port, it's not like an SD card reader or a small battery charger for an M10 will send you into the realm of excess baggage handling fees. Although, who's getting on a plane these days? 
you don't have to buy an M11 to get the new VisaFlex either. Although I do understand it to be the case that if you really like the look of the Type 20, you can only use that one on an M10. Are you willing to trade off ultimate resolution and a bare sensor for possibly even lower noise at high ISO than the M11? You might be able to get what you want with the M10 monochrome. Again, to be determined. And if you do crop the crap out of images, you could alternatively simply buy one lens longer than the longest lens you have now, like maybe that gorgeous Apotel at 135 3.4, and still print pretty darned big, no problem. More foundationally, the M11 is for people who understand and embrace any modern digital M's strengths and weaknesses, which, given how long I've already been prattling on, I'll not bother to repeat, although I do encourage you to watch our special Leica edition of the Budget Gourmet to better understand, if you don't already, what those strengths and weaknesses are, right link in the show notes below. As for you and actual buying advice, first, as I just implied, if you don't need or want to reach all the way up to 60 megapixels and don't mind using multiple batteries like Pez, or if the absence of a bottom plate truly bothers you, you ought to start with a close look at the M10R. As I said, I came this close to buying one and it is a wonderful digital M that will make your M glass look better than you've ever seen it. while preserving the color information the monochrome doesn't, and that even if one converts to black and white in post, which I do, is very, very useful. As I'm recording this, the M10R is selling new for the same price as the 11, but I suspect that it is only a matter of time before you may be able to find a new R for less, maybe even now. I also suspect that used Rs will drop in price too. How much precisely when, I couldn't say. I would not, however, hold my breath waiting for the M10 monochrome's price to come down in any significant way anytime soon. Unless, of course, one really can get more dynamic range and better high ISO performance at, say, 36 megapixels than the monochrome at 40. We will see. Moving on. I'm sure many of us don't mind multiple batteries and absolutely don't want or need anything more than 24 megapixels, which is good news for those of us looking for digital M because the now discontinued 24 megapixel M10 series, the original, the P and D, is where you will likely find the best deals of all among the digital M's I'm personally happy to recommend used or new. What if you really want an integrated EVF? Well, you can wait for who knows how long for an EVF equipped M, or perhaps for a second or third Q2 variant with fixed 35 or 50 millimeter lens, or you could just buy a Q2 now if a 28 or 35 millimeter field of view is your thing, a Leica CL if you want the flexibility of interchangeable lenses, and do not underestimate what the CL can do even without IBIS, or an SL2 if you want IBIS, video, weather sealing, or just about everything else the M11 doesn't have and you want. On the other hand, if you don't have any special affinity for the M, if resolution is your holy grail and you pretty much want everything for less, well, you can buy a 61 megapixel Sony A7R 4A for one third the price, a 60 megapixel Sigma FPL for almost a quarter of the price, or a 102 megapixel Fujifilm GFX 100S for two thirds the price all with autofocus, a varying performance, thank you very much, weather sealing, a much wider array of lens options, and in the case of the Sony and Fuji, IBIS as well. Otherwise, if you are at all like me, that is to say, you prefer megapixels to longer lenses, already have the other cameras you need or want for the other things you want to do, appreciate the much better battery life of the M11, probably anticipating the use of the rear screen or the VisaFlex. Understand and appreciate the built-in 64 gigabytes, the better dynamic range and better high ISO performance, if only at 36 or 18 megapixels. Know when you want to travel small, light, and deliberate, and will not generally be shooting wide open because, hey, focusing something like a 91.5 Sumalux wide open through an optical finder with that small rangefinder patch is hard, and it ain't easy on the rear screen either. Know how to use, and don't mind bracing yourself to get the low shutter speed shot at the ISO you want because you don't have IBIS. If you are someone for whom the M serves as an inspiration, a talisman, or the highest form of photographic tool of all in my book, 
one's companion. If you believe life is short, or that life offers no guarantees, or that Carpe Diem is not just a line from an old Robin Williams movie, and if you have the means, the M11 just might be the M for you. Especially if you already have a 35 or 50 Aposumicron M to go with it. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. For all of your website needs, Squarespace is the place to go. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash you for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code Hugh at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below because this is an incredible audience. If you'd like a copy of our Streets of New York, the book, head over to www.3bmep.com slash books. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one video session with me for a portfolio review, explore or hone your artistic voice, select gear and more, sign up at www.3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, consider supporting our work by using our no-cost to you affiliate links down below, picking up some official three blind men and an elephant swag at 3bmep.threadless.com, sending coffee money via PayPal, or best of all, Join us as a patron over at Patreon. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.